Hey, it's Dougie Wood, and in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about what is the SharePoint Lookbook. So, to summarize essentially what the SharePoint Lookbook is, it's a series of pre built templates from Microsoft, templated SharePoint sites essentially. Now, I wouldn't necessarily always um, use these templates exactly as they are built, but it gives you a good kind of idea and almost a bit of food for thought about how you could potentially design a SharePoint site. And there's actually different layouts, both for communication sites like we can see here, and also for team sites as well. Um, obviously, communication sites being more about publishing information to the wider organization as a kind of more open internet model, whereas a team site is more just for um, kind of internal team members and things like that to be working together. It's really easy to access a SharePoint lookbook. If you just Google SharePoint lookbook, the first link here under the Microsoft adoption will get you to the SharePoint lookbook. Now, I'm going to start off by just running you through um, some ideas of the SharePoint lookbook. Um, and actually, everything that you see here can be easily deployed when you come to create a new SharePoint site within SharePoint Online. You will give it an option to choose from the Microsoft templates um, one of these particular uh, layouts. But I just want to run you through a couple of examples of these templates to give you an idea about what it is you can deploy and get some ideas about how you could lay out your SharePoint site. So the first one is Brand Central. Now, again, take this with a pinch of salt. Um, you don't have to deploy it and use it specifically for uh, Brand Central, as in like creating a site specifically or branding materials. But you can get some ideas about how the SharePoint site is laid out and maybe even steal some of these ideas to introduce into your own SharePoint site. So the Brand Central template is described as providing a centralized location for brand assets and guidelines, uh, site capabilities that showcase the latest brand assets and guidance, highlight principles and values that influence the organization's brand, feature examples of brand expression in action, and answer frequently asked questions. Um, it also tells you when you deploy this what you'll get with it. So you do get one home page pre-built that looks like this, and you get three additional kind of pages which are going to support this um, sort of as a, as a brand central template. Um, so uh, from a design perspective, the bits of this that I quite like, so I quite like this kind of three column. I call this the power of three. Um, and I think this works really well to have almost like the top three things that you think that um, users are going to be looking for. So zoom in a little bit here. Um, uh, what they're going to be looking for. So things like on a brand site, you would expect people will be looking for branded images, maybe some pre-built designs or templates, maybe some PowerPoint present uh, presentation templates that people might be wanting to use for pitch decks and things like that. Um, I also quite like the use down here of, this is a hero web part, but it's actually only uh, being used with what they call a layer. So you can either have it as tiles or layers. And it's just one layer. So you've got an image here on the left-hand side. You've got a kind of tag um, here, a title, text, and also a clickable hyperlink. The whole tile itself is um, clickable, um, but you can also make this link here a separate link as well if you wanted to. Um, or point it to the same same location. So I quite like that. So if I was going to take anything from, from this kind of design, it would be these three elements up here, as well as this kind of layered uh, approach of the hero web part down here, which is something I quite like. So let's just go back into the templates area uh, and take a little look. Well, there's some sort of bug with the SharePoint uh, lookbook there. So I just refresh the page uh, and it's taking me back to um, the, this sort of layout here. So we can also see we've got a crisis management template. Um, again, this was kind of launched, to be honest, I can't exactly remember when this template was originally launched. It was definitely um, a good few years ago. Um, I have a feeling it was actually pre-COVID. It might have been when there was some natural disaster that happened in the US. And essentially the point of this is to kind of keep people up to date uh, with what's kind of going on, helping people that maybe are being affected by um, a natural disaster, uh, keeping them in touch with people at work uh, and keeping sort of things flowing. So a crisis management template is really useful for that kind of thing, helping people um, get answers to frequently asked questions, um, getting people easily accessing useful resources that they're going to need in, in a time of crisis, things like that. But again, from a design perspective, um, the things I love about this particular template is this right-hand side here. So this is um, kind of like a, a, 
almost like a secondary area of content. So if you think about the kind of the two thirds of the page is this kind of area here, then we have this one third sort of section area here. I think this is fantastic for putting in things like it's almost like B category content, almost like not quite as important as what's on the left hand side, but things like useful links, FAQs, uh, upcoming events, things like that are perfect to put in here. The only thing I would say from a design perspective, and it's easier to notice once I zoom out, is if you're gonna use this side section, I would always recommend that you make sure that you fill it up. I think when people only have sort of 50% of this this bar filled, it just looks a bit weird and it has a bit of a, doesn't have the quite real look that, that I think works quite well. So I would be tempted to move something like this additional resources into the right hand side as well, just to move this um, section of the page up a little bit and sort of fill out that space a little bit more. The other thing that I really love about this particular design that I think that you should steal and put into your own SharePoint internet is this very large call to action web part down here where we've got a background image, which is really eye-catching sort of globe picture with a bit of text on the top of it. So you learn more about the worldwide impact, but this could be anything, but I've seen people use this again to draw attention to specific internal campaigns or pushing people towards things like visions and values information, things like that. Or it could just be a bit of a feedback form. So you want to get some feedback on the intranet or an employee satisfaction survey or something like that. But I really like this as part of the design as well. So let's just make our way back to the templates area. Um, the next one is department. Now, I think department is a really useful template. And to be honest, I probably use this one the most out of all of them. Um, I do tweak it slightly. Um, so the purpose of the department template is if you imagine every department in the organization, uh, finance, HR, IT, they're all gonna need a SharePoint space for their own team to store documents, collaborate and work together. However, um, you are also going to need to have a place for these departments to publish information to the wider business. So things like policies, procedures, things like that. Um, or if it's finance, maybe it's quick links to things like um, where they can find the expense request form or um, finding out dates of when they get paid or whatever it is. There's information and the services that those departments offer to the wider organization. And that's where this department site template comes in. So these large tiles across the top, I must admit I'm not a massive fan of large hero tiles across the top because to be honest, realistically, you'd only want to be using these large tiles across the top if um, you're expecting people to land on this site and automatically bounce straight off to something else. Um, but it does look quite nice, especially if you've got plenty of imagery of people and things like that. What I do really like about this this layout, again, is this power of three. We've got three columns here. We've got a bit of text, a bit of bio about the department, what they do, what they're responsible for, things like that. Um, that can be really useful to kind of help guide people to know what to expect from that department and what types of things um, that they can ask from the department, what types of information they can gather from this particular SharePoint site. Then you've got a bit more about learning about that particular department area, so their leadership, their people, vision, culture, things like that. Things you can do, so maybe these could be links, as I say, if it was finance, it might be, say, how do I um, submit an expense request? Maybe if it's HR, it might be how do I book a leave request? Um, whatever it is, these are some useful things that that department is responsible for. We've got things like events web parts, documents, things like that, typical things we expect to see on a SharePoint site, news as well. Um, and then down here we've got a people web part. So this could be people to contact for specific things. But the only thing I would say is I've seen this kind of work for some organizations and I've seen it kind of be a bit of a disaster for some organizations because if you start listing people's names directly here, you might find that people start bypassing processes of um, using things like email or other ways, official ways to, to submit a request. And they just cut all of that middleman out and go straight to the person, which for some organizations that works. Um, and some organizations, they just find those individual people get a bit overwhelmed. So I'd be, I'd be careful about who you put on those pages using the people web part. So let's take a little look at some other useful templates. So the event template, um, to be honest, uh, it's not there's not a lot in here that you're necessarily going to learn from a design perspective, but it's quite a good idea that if you are having events, conferences, things like that, and you want to put all the information, maybe um, uploading the recording afterwards, um, whatever it is, a bit of information to help promote an event, having an official kind of SharePoint site for that could be really useful. 
Um, same goes for things like Leadership Connect. The design elements of this are not particularly great, so I'm not going to go into this. Um, but it's a good concept to actually have a SharePoint site about your leadership. Who are they? Maybe some bio pages of each of the ind individual leaders, um, the heads of department, things like that, um, and, and what they're kind of responsible for and things like that. Um, a good template I really like, though, is this human resources. Again, it is technically like a, a department site. You would expect to have a human resources site. But I love the kind of design of this. There's a lot of aspects of this that I think that you could poach and put onto your own SharePoint site. Again, we've got this kind of secondary content there on the right-hand side here. And I actually have poached this a number of times. This concept of rather than just having um, kind of like buttons which say, um, holiday request, expense request, things like that, which take you off into systems. It's actually finding a way that people would ask a question and then the link is almost the answer. So it's like, how do I find my tax forms? And then by clicking on that, that takes you to a template of tax forms, for example, or how do I take a leave of absence? And then when you click on that, that automatically opens up uh, the leave request booking system, as an example. So I love that as a kind of format. Um, and I, I do advocate that people use that because I, I found that people have, uh, have really integrated well to that and um, it's made the end user's life a lot easier. Again, we've got this kind of power of three down here. We've got compensation, career, benefits, um, and these images across the top. The only thing that you might want to choose to add, because this doesn't really look like it's all that clickable, um, you could add a button web part underneath here just to really drive home um, to the user that's viewing this, that there are clickable actions to take you through to more information on compensation, career, or company benefits. I really like this area as well. So this is more like FAQ type style, um, but it's more about kind of topics, um, and maybe it's topics by role. So a very common thing now on Intrets is to have managers toolkits, so some information specifically for managers. To be honest with this design though, I'd be very tempted to move these links down to the very bottom rather than having uh, in the middle of the page. I think it's a bit text heavy. Again, we've got the people web part, but you know how I feel about that. Be careful about who you're putting on there and for what purposes. Um, and then we've got this a call to action web part. Again, it's much smaller this time than it was on, on that globe image. And we do have a bit of text. We have a button on here as well to tell us how we can help you today. Um, again, this could be a link to a satisfaction, employee satisfaction form, feedback forms, um, questionnaires, things like that. And it kind of feels, to be honest, in this template that they run out of ideas past this line. As it gets a little bit kind of blank down here. We've got a news web part. We've got some celebrations, um, sort of buttons and things like that, which might link you off into specific news feeds. And then we've got most recent documents, which are kind of going to show up the most recent documents that have been accessed on that SharePoint site. I just wanted to ask a quick favor. If you're enjoying this video, please do subscribe to my channel. It's a free way that you can say thank you to me, and I really appreciate it. If you've got any questions at all, you can use the comments feed below, but also go and check out the other videos on my channel. I've got loads of content about SharePoint, Teams, Microsoft Forms, Power Automate, and so much more. If you need any professional assistance with Microsoft 365 or in particular SharePoint, there's a link in the bio on my channel to get in contact with me directly. Now, there's loads more templates in here for you to go and have a look at, and I'll suggest you do go dive through them. There is even team site templates that I've not got time to go through today, um, but I would have a look at those as well. Some key ones that I suggest you go and look at, organizational home, um, as well as um, the Learning Central and the New Employee Onboarding. These three are fantastic and you'll definitely get some great ideas from this. But I just want to finish off by looking at the Volunteer Center. Again, take this with a pinch of salt. It doesn't have to be used as a volunteer center, although if you're a nonprofit um, that's, that uses volunteers, you could build this as an extranet so you could share this out to people that aren't even necessarily internal users. There are ex external volunteers that you can bring in as external users into the SharePoint site. Um, or even if you're just a, an organization that wants to promote volunteering work and social initiatives internally, you could use this template out of the box. Um, however, I actually think it's a fantastically designed SharePoint site. I think it looks really good. And I've even helped people with this in the past before use this as their SharePoint homepage. Um, so again, we've got this kind of one layer hero web part across the top, which is a clickable button, um, which is takes you down a get started path. So maybe this is more pages to talk to volunteers about how they can get started. Some quick links here that they think that volunteers are going to quickly want to get access to things like registration forms, uh, information on programs, the volunteers toolkit and the donation portal. 
We might have some news built in here. I love this kind of layout with the image on the right hand side, but a text. This could potentially even be quick links, um, just to sort of show volunteer impacts, maybe linking out to specific um, volunteer days and things like that. Some more quick links. We've got that call to action web part we looked at before. And also down here, again, I love this layout. Um, a bit of an image here, a bit of text. And also got the people web part, which is linking off to information. So you can click on that and find someone's phone number, email address to contact them potentially about a volunteer day. On the right hand side, we've got countdown timer. Now this is a fantastic way to build um, kind of information and almost um, awareness around a particular date or event that's coming up. Uh, even have a link here if you wanted to link off to a sign up form, for example, upcoming events and quick links as well. But again, all of these are just ideas, concepts. You can be easily moved around. If there's something that you like from one of these templates and something else you like from another template, because it's all out of the box, you can merge these together nice and easily. And of course, change all the imagery and colors and everything like that to fit your brand. If you need any help with SharePoint, of course, use the link in the description on my channel to get in contact with me. And if you've got any questions at all, you can use the comments feed below.